Welcome back. The murder of struggled stalwart Chris Hani has been described as the death of a democratic dream. Hani's family and the SACP are opposing convicted assassin Janusz Walus's application to the Constitutional Court. He wants it to overturn Justice and Correctional Services Minister Ronald Amola's decision to deny him parole. Our senior reporter Avi Wem Tila has been following today's arguments. He joins us now live. So what is Janusz Walus saying in his latest application? Well, the Polish national is saying that he's now a changed man. In fact, realizes that apartheid was wrong and in the last nearly 30 years of incarceration, um, he's been closer to God. He was making yet another application, this time at the apex court, the constitutional court, um, where it was heard there by the bench of the uh, justices. In fact, stating that um, he's been unconstitutionally dealt with unfairly, basically. You'd remember that his first uh, application was back in 2011 already, and time and again he'd be denied um, as he tried to appeal those parole applications. He says that if life in prison means that he is to have no prospects of parole, then that in itself is being unfairly um, dealt with in the terms of the Constitution itself. But of course we've heard opposing arguments from the representative of the Yanni family, as well as the SACP, who suggests that this was just not just another murder. In fact, it was a murder of democracy um, in its entirety and the society as it holds, as it aspired to kill the dream of uh, democratic South Africa. That, remember that this happened in 1993, just on the dawn of democracy. Let's take a listen to uh, Muzi Sakane representing the ANI and the SACP. My learned friend tried to, to talk to us to the court about people who've eaten others, killed them and cooked them. He doesn't know whether they ate them. But of course therein lies the misunderstanding about the nature of this crime. That the nature of this crime was not merely a murder of an individual. It was actually a murder of a democratic dream. It was a matter of a nation, a possibility of this nation to become what it is now, what it has now become, a democratic constitutional state. So this crime, if one analyzes it, it doesn't help to look at it as just a murder of a human being or a person. And the courts have told us this. It's a murder of a person who symbolized what the future held. And had that crime, without the political leadership of this country that stopped the emotions from rising high, this court would not sit, half of us would be dead, and maybe this country and its building would be in, in shambles. And it didn't happen. But the ultimate aim of that list was not just to murder those people, including just Justice Goldstone, by the way. It was not that. It was to make sure that the democratic dream of the South African citizen doesn't happen. Such powerful words, hey? A death of a democratic dream. So I was reading earlier that Soli Mapaila from the SACP was saying that Valus showed no remorse up until he actually had to apply for parole. So what's the Chris Hani family saying about whether or not they forgive him? Not forgiven them at all, um, Shahan. In fact, the prospects of that happening are quite bleak. If anything, uh, the statements made by uh, Chris Hani's widow, Dimbo, Mama Dimbo Hani, she said that she'll never forgive um, Walus. Uh, says that even the attempts or bleak attempts, you'd understand that Walus wrote a letter to the SACP as well as the Hani family saying that that was not well received. It's only done for the media. He, she went on to attribute the death of her daughter, the death of the uh, former president of the ANC, O.R. Tambo, and many others to that specific killing of Chris Hani, re reiterating sim similar sentiments as Sikakane had shared. So saying that basically, she'll never forgive the person that murdered her husband, in fact, wants the constitution in its whole um, to uphold justice. Let's take a listen to Mama Timpohani. This chap, whatever his name is, I don't even want to say it, uh, 20 years later, after we have been co in court from 94, during apartheid, okay, 20 years later he says he is sorry, he never talked to me, he said he's sorry to you, the media. In any case, I would never forgive him. I know, you know, this theory you tell us you are Christians, we are supposed to give, forgive. I'm human. 
He took my husband's life. He took the life of my ch children's father. Why should I ever give him? In any case, even in Catholic Church, those who are Catholics, you have to confess first before the priest will say, God will forgive you, my child. So I will never forgive him. All I'm asking for from the judiciary is justice on my husband's death. Nothing more, nothing less. All right, we're going to leave it right there. Our senior reporter, Aviwe Mtila.